Well, welcome back. It's 7.34 and this is Breakfast on GB News. Well, if you want us to go through some of the day's headlines now, is author and journalist Susan Holder and showbiz reporter and broadcaster Stephanie Tetchy. But first, let's have a look at what's made the front pages this morning. The Daily Mail leads with their special investigation into the gang rapist deported back to Somalia. And the Express leads with the manhunt underway for six terror suspects believed to be in the UK. The Mirror has on its front page the report claiming that £100 billion of taxpayers' money has been wasted by the Tories. And the Sun's front page features sick tweets made by I'm a Celebrity's Grace Dent against Nigel Farage. And the Daily Star leads Boffins claims that you could bust that beer belly by munching berries. Now, I hope we're doing that one, because that's, <laughs> that's something that, that I have a great interest in. Anyway, let's go now to Suze and Steph. Why don't we kick off, Steph, with this one. An alarming headline, one in three women have experienced sexual assault on trains. Yes, it is very alarming, and they say that in, the, in this um, thing in The Sun, the article, it says that most of the attacks occur between 5pm and 7pm, which is rush hour. So let's break down what they mean by being sexually assaulted as a woman on a train. It says it could be touching, it could be a man pressing too close to you, you know, when it gets really packed on the carriages, They've said it's upskirting. They say it's indecent exposure as well. They say 51% of vet victims have had other passengers intervene to their help. But when it actually comes to reporting it to the police, it actually drops down to 18%. Mm. Me, myself, I haven't been a victim of being sexually assaulted on a train. I do understand when you're a bit too on a train and everyone's packed like sardines and then you've got some horrible, sweaty person behind We've you. We've all had And that. it just yeah. happens to be <laughs> yeah. a man. But, but I've had had that. That. Yeah. I've had that and I'm a bloke. This so is what I think. It feels a bit like a, a bit of a loose interpretation of, of sexual assault. If you're on the tube in rush hour, people will be pressing up yeah. against mm. you. And I wonder, it's strange to interpret that as a sort I wonder how helpful these sort of headlines are, because straight away it gets blokes as a token bloke on the panel. Yeah. I know this is a serious issue, but it yeah. gets blokes shackles up because it's like, hang on, no, I'm not, I'll be, and I have been, yeah. one of the 51% who would get involved and give somebody a thump if necessary okay, if, if, they're, if they're groping a woman. Like, yeah. like, you're not going to stand for that, right? Yeah. That's what blokes mm -hmm. should be doing. But if it's like being pressed against or being looked at, yeah. it's like, are we, are we lessening the actual severity of a genuine assault by yeah. broadening out too far and making men feel like they're yeah, a bit I of mean, a problem? I think, I think... Or is this not about men? Well, it... <sighs> I think I think it is about that. I mean, I personally haven't had that happen to me mm -hmm. either. I am very aware when I go on public transport, though, I don't sit there with my head in a book or my mm -hmm. my uh, AirPods in or anything like that. My son's girlfriend, they live in... I mean, I'm, I come in out of London regularly, but they live in London. They commute all the time, and she's in her 20s, she's blonde... She's had it happen a couple of times to her. Mm. And one of the times she was sat on a tube train, there was a few people, she wasn't on her own, there were a few people around, and the man came and sat right next to her and licked her face. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Exactly. Oh, my God. And she was, she got, she got her head down and her, her, her AirPods on. So it, it shocked her, obviously, and she recoiled. And he then started kind of being aggressive with her because she was kind of backing off from mm. him. Another man came from the other side of the couch, sat next to her, said, just talk to me, and waited till the next mm -hmm. stop where they got off and reported. But that, that sort of fella, you know, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah. We, we need so, other men So these in. things do happen. I actually find the tube quite a courteous place. I know this is... I, I, I know People what you mean. Offers it. People go, after you, as you're jumping through the doors. Mm. And I'm like, what do you mean, after you? We haven't got time for that <laughs> behaviour. Just get in. But <laughs> buses are where I find you get a lot more aggro. And yeah. I don't mean mm. sexual necessarily, yeah. but just women and men being very kind of pushy and aggressive mm. with you mm. and jostling. I've actually been pushed around on buses quite a few times mm. in London. But, not. On the, but yeah, but I think... It, it's not kind of fair to say just because we don't happen to have no, those yeah. experiences. It doesn't we have happen. to recognise that, that it is a thing. And I think just travelling alone late at night, this is where... I mean, I, I do think this is where staff should be more present on tubes, on trains. I Absolutely. I think, I think because we don't have people going up and down because there aren't people around, mm. then if people are behaving terribly, yeah. there's not much you can do about but, but, it. The thing is, there are adverts on trains now. I think the reason why these cases have gone up, because I've seen on the train, they'll be like, if you feel uncomfortable, if you think you've been looked at inappropriately, police report it and I think more women are feeling braver mm. to come and report these cases on the train and I think every organisation now wants to kind of make it make it seem that they are doing
doing something when it comes to taking sexual assault seriously. Yeah. So the trains aren't, you know, a miss from that. One thing I think they could do to take sexual assault more seriously is to properly get the night tube up and running again mm. in yeah. London. I think there's a huge problem with women who, you know, go out late at night, they might even be working late at mm -hmm. night, want to get home and don't have and a safe yeah. way of getting home. And you can't get Walking Ubers anymore the in the city, in the city exactly. centre. It's very difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a problem. It must be a problem everywhere. If you go out as a woman and you're trying to get home, you, you want to feel that those facilities are there and they're properly staffed Absolutely. and they're run properly. Especially but, when driving in London is just so... But, but also, you do have a responsibility to be aware of yourself. I mean, if I felt... I, I, I would hopefully wouldn't kind of let it get to anything. Mm -hmm. If I thought somebody was looking at me in a funny way or somebody had followed me particularly on a tube, I would get off and, and, get, mm. a, and get the course, next one. It's, it's I would move myself. It's important. It's not... You know, this is a bit bigger than London, you yeah. know. I mean, yeah. uh, if you, it's, it's a night bus, you know. If, yeah. if, mm -hmm. if, you, if you live in most ordinary parts of... Britain. And what all I'm saying is, you know, these sort of conversations yeah. need to include men as part of the solution, yeah. uh, rather than sort of treating men as, as, as part of the problem. Because yeah. that sort of bloke who sits down yeah. and says, talk to me, that's the sort of bloke yeah. you want to be. And then or... gets angry with you when you say, no, I really don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is, I mean, that's that kind of toxic masculinity it's, thing. We were... It's not about... Yeah, but hang, hang, on about a hang on a sec. I want to pick up on that. Go on. <laughs> because, because the phrase toxic mas masculinity, it's International Men's Day, it's yeah. something that really sticks in my craw. And yes, because you don't think it exists? It doesn't exist, it's made up. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, yesterday we, we did a huge report on knife crime, Operation Scepter, handing in blades, and we had a young lad in, mm -hmm. um, was it Andre? Mm. Andre was, was a youth crime representative from Coventry, you know, around you know, your neck of the yeah, woods. Yeah. And he was saying that what we need is more positive masculinity in these young lads' lives. Male role models who were missing, absent yeah. fathers, for, for yeah. whatever reasons. Yeah. And actually, they, they are then preyed upon, groomed essentially by criminals, by gangsters who mm. see vulnerable young men and they become the alpha male, a toxic man yeah. mm. takes over from the lack of yeah, yeah. positive masculinity. Yeah, so on International Men's also... Day, let's hear it for positive. But, but that's true, but you... In all demise... <laughs> We're both sorry. trying to get... Well, I'm oh, get to argue with Martin, too. I'm a cue, I'm a cue. What have like, I started? But Martin, in order to get to, to positivity, we have to deal with the negativity when it comes to toxic masculinity. And it is women who are on the receiving end of it, and it has been growing. I do feel like... Well, most assaults have... are men on men, so it's men doing it, but yeah. most, most people get bashed about are men. But, look, it's not a competition for victimhood. No, it's not, and I just think it's, it comes about dealing with the culture that young men have been grown with and what they mm. have around them. I do agree they do need more positive role models, but mm. I think as a society we do need to see where is it going wrong for our young men? What are they missing? I, said, I wanted to ask you about this. Yeah. I, I've noticed recently almost every TV programme yeah. and film I watch, yeah. all of the men seem to be... Uh, the characters seem to be sort of pathetic or uh, uh, embarrassing or, mm. or downright horrible. Yeah. And I think there is a problem. It sounds a bit trite, yeah. but no male role models on television. No. And I think, to be honest, because there's been almost two... Thank you for saying female that. ..female empowerment in that sense. I feel like the, man, the man's role in society is being diminished and women have grown their voice and mm. that's kind of trickled into the entertainment world a bit. And every kind of person who does TV, whatever, they don't want it to make it seem where a man could be making a woman, you know, mm. undermining her in that sense. As a woman, I'm a bit sick of watching sort of brilliant, feisty, amazing women who seem pretty unrealistic, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, but I don't know why relatable. Yeah, but, you, but you have to... I've converted you, you all. To, <laughs> how, 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 how how old are you? Are you? I'm 30. You're 30. Yeah, you have to bear with people who have been around a bit longer, who yeah. have seen... Absolutely. It's great that you're I bored know. of it now. That's brilliant, because, because it's obviously quite present for you and you see that a lot. But if you haven't seen that for a long time... Mm, and, I do, and I and do in the, And in that. the past, yeah. it might not have been. But I think you're right. I think the pendulum shouldn't swing. And what nobody should do... Uh, women shouldn't do it to men. Men shouldn't do it to women. To make yourself strong and, and resilient, yeah. you shouldn't be pulling somebody else down. Mm, yeah. you should be, that. And that, that's the problem. But to say toxic masculinity is made up, I will pick you up on that. It because, is made up. Because, well, I don't, I don't agree with that, because I think well, we've, all, we might, not, we might not have all been sexually assaulted on the tube, but I think we, as women, we are all faced every day mm -hmm. with men who will try yeah. and tell us something yeah. to our face that will mansplain to us mm, all yes. the time. There's so a different th phrase for that, and I can't, yeah, I can't maybe, say it Well, maybe you just don't <laughs> like the phrase, but, 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 the, but an arrogance of a male-dominated situation mm. is a real yes. thing. Yeah. That women do have to find com combat. All right, let's move on. We've let's strayed from the start. Let's, let's, let's move on. Um, and I think we, we can all agree we've got some gender um, um, parity. We've got, we've, got, we've got some understanding going on here. <laughs> we have, we this have is great. You see, we can all talk about the fact that Susan's wrong. And... <laughs> 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 Now you see that's dangerous now, right? 
I'm going to move gonna on before I end up wearing this coffee. Yeah. Sue, <laughs> let's get to your story about a couple always seemingly at it. Harry and Meghan. Yes. Apparently, uh, and if, if we know anything about the Sussexes, we know that anything that's in the papers, I think we, we've all learned now, there are leaks, they're, they're as leaky as a cauldron, aren't they? <laughs> anything, anything that is in the papers is because they, they've kind of put it out there and they want it to be known. They're kind of making it known that if an invitation to Christmas at Sandringham was offered, or summer at Balmoral, they'll take yeah. summer at Balmoral, <laughs> wouldn't, so we would all, yeah. wouldn't we all, wouldn't we all, then um, then they may accept that. Now, right. that might be lovely for them, <laughs> but um, I think as Christmas is approaching, we, and a lot of people watching this at home will probably be thinking of, of, of families and, and, and people that they need to see, <laughs> that possibly that they kind of, you know, could do without. So it's, it's, it's a family kind of situation that everybody can identify with, that you've got to have somebody kind of sharing your turkey mm. that maybe you could, you could, you, you think you're, you're going to have an argument with rather than uh, than pull a cracker. But yeah, I find this fascinating. I mean, the Sussex is to me. I was one of those people who watched the, uh, the wedding, just thinking what a brilliant thing this was. I was yeah. so pleased for mm -hmm. Harry. I thought she was absolutely phenomenal. I still think she could be. I don't see any evidence of her trying to do that. But these, this is two people who had everything on a plate when you saw the thousands and thousands of people who yeah. wished them well on their wedding to have come to where they are how you can throw away the mm. opportunity to do good, to be to be amazing, to have everything that they wanted as well. They've thrown it away so far. Totally well, agree, I but think... Steph, don't, don't you think, though, this is just typical of them? It's like, I know we've been complete nightmares all yeah. year, but yeah. we'd love a bit of, of turkey at the, the palace, please. Well, to be honest, I think this was always going to happen. Yeah. Like, reality was going to always hit them at some point. And more than anything, be, beyond the headlines, this is a family here, you know. Prince Harry reached out to um, King Charles earlier this week and they had a phone call and apparently like the lines of communication is open for them and as in with any family you do have to try repair what's gone on they can't be at odds with the royal families for the rest of their life and if the royal family is willing to give them that branch of an invitation to Christmas and they're saying they're open to it clearly Harry and, Harry and Meghan want to make amends mm. but and why shouldn't they do you have think that they opportunity should? do you think they should invite yes them? I think they should invite them because they're a part of the family I, I agree with they you. are I agree with you. they I, are the rebels of the family. I think the problem is not? anything that happens around the table or any any kind of any sort of situation with the family that they know now the royal family will know it'll it'll be part of the next book it'll yeah. be part of the next Netflix series. Well, they're is, trading constantly, well, and I don't know how they're going to stop that. This is where King Charles needs to be a father to his son and yeah. tell him like this is not on. If you want yeah. to be a part of this family with your wife, you're going to have to fix up on certain things. It's not about playing for the media. It's actually him putting his foot down as a father and saying, Harry, look... OK, I, on, on the one hand, Christmas is a, is a time for forgiveness. Yes, it is. It's a time of coming together. But on the other hand, it's like, well, you didn't come to my 75th birthday. Yeah. He just, wasn't you, invited. You just phoned me up. They weren't invited. Um, and Meghan didn't come to the coronation because she, 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 she was... Didn't bit... steal the, she didn't want to steal the limelight. Didn't steal the limelight. She didn't want to steal the limelight. Come know, off it. Come know, off it. What a load of paper. cards were. I don't and, mean... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Everyone would have been concentrated on Meghan at the coronation. By her not coming, it was still a big thing. It still made headlines. So can you imagine if she came? If she, she has a cheek to turn up. That's what would have happened. <laughs> if, if, she, she, have if she'd been giving you, you know, your family in the neck all year yeah. like this, would you say, come round and have some turkey and some plum duff love? I wouldn't. <sighs> well, it's all about forgiveness at Christmas. Mm. It's, 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 I think it's, the grandkids I feel sorry for. There's another piece in one of the papers yeah. today about how close... Uh, yeah. King Charles is to his his, his three uh, grandchildren um, from uh, Willem and Kate, and you you could see that we we know that we don't have to read it in the paper, we don't have to wait for a leak, we don't have to wait for Omid Scobie or whatever his name is to tell us all about that. Because when you watch the footage of the the jubilee thing, and you saw him bouncing Louis on his knee yeah. and the children running over to him, it's clear they have a relationship, and you see that, and your heart does break a bit actually yeah. for the two yeah. grandchildren of of, of Harry and Meghan. We don't have very much family at all because obviously no, they don't. not no, because not, they've fallen out with everybody with, exactly yeah. not I mean I, I don't think Dory I think Dory is now you know days are numbered aren't they I mean oh, gosh, she's the only oh, person oh. that Megan haven't yeah. haven't fallen out with everybody else is just persona non grata I don't mean to sound too skeptical but I think if I were King Charles I'd be a little bit worried because Megan and Harry's whole identity yeah. is built off spilling stories about totally. the royal family yeah. and obviously they've kind of run out of stories about we, the royal family have, now they haven't seen them for years which is possibly why they want to come back right okay let
let's move on to another story about Meghan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a story about Meghan. Meghan's appearance at a list party viewed as a slick power play. What's going well, on? Well, earlier this week she attended the Power of Women Gala in Hollywood and LA and she made a solo appearance. And I like this piece by Carol Graham in the Mail today, because I know Hollywood's quite fickle, and now questions are being asked. What is next for Harry and Meghan? She did allude that they've got some exciting things coming up next that's, year. That's Meghan's um, word, there is yeah, it. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> we, we, I'll be the judge of that, love. <laughs> but, you know, in Caroline's piece, she talks about, you know, how are they going to make the cash? Because their deal with Netflix runs out in 2025. They've had a string of flops to their name. So it's like, what is next for Harry and Meghan? And I think when it comes to Hollywood, you're only as good as your last big hit. And because they've had so many flops now, mm. I do think, what is next for Meghan and mm. how are they going to be able to And they've had so many flops interesting. because they haven't put the work in. They had a podcast studio built in their Montecito mansion and they did a ba barely a few hours' work. When she was doing a podcast, she wouldn't interview everybody herself. She only wanted to interview the famous people. She got other people, the researchers could do all the rest of it. If, if you want to make it big in Hollywood or indeed anywhere, mm. it's about work. Mm. And I don't, they're, they're like the kind of... They're, 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 they remind me of the teenagers that you see sometimes... Possibly people will have around their, their table at, at Christmas and see them. And they don't really want a proper job. They just want to do what? Oh, I'm going to be a TikTok influencer. No, you're not, love. But, but that's what they're like. And it's just like, that's not a job. Go and do some real work well, and then come back to me and tell me what well, you want to do. That's why I do feel sorry for them, because I feel like they've got an identity crisis at the moment where they're no longer a part of the royals. They're in big Hollywood, which will drop you faster than anything. So right now they're both thinking, how do we make ourselves relevant? So they do need to align themselves with the royals. Do some and work. What, what? It's, but they, this, they've got the biggest platform they had. I mean, it's diminishing, it seems, because yeah. people are less interested. Apparently, the hits on them on social media and things are getting less and less, and I, I can understand that, because we've heard it all before. I mean, the man from Spotify who called them grifters I've got, <laughs> he absolutely got his finger on, on it, if you ask me. But they have, they still have. She's gorgeous. She's very um, uh, erudite. She can speak really well. You know, he's very lovable when he wants to be. They could do so much amazing work around the, around the planet if they wanted to. I have no idea what they think they're up to. Well, they bang on about climate change and take a private jet, and, and they bang on about you know racism when when the very proof that Meghan was was Absolutely. warmly welcomed and mm. loved in the royal family mm -hmm. surely is proof. Prince of no Charles racism. walking her and, down the aisle. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a problem. Shall we do? Someone else that's not just about the royals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Suze. Um, yes. Cool story about pensions. So, so um, pop yes. icon Sandy Shaw, many of you, of course, will remember, is talking about pensions for yeah. rocks. Tell so, us about this. So, Sandy Shaw, who you may remember as the barefoot Eurovision winner yeah. who sang Puppet on a String, she's 76 now, and she's got involved um, in what sounds like a really great kind of uh, initiative, actually. Um, she's um, It's a manifesto uh, for later life mm. um, by campaigners' later life ambitions. And some of the things that they're calling for, they're saying, basically, that if you, you ignore pensions, obviously, at your peril... Mm. That mm. both the government and the opposition are kind of, you know, a, a, a dereliction of duty, really. And, and I, it's something I feel quite passionate about. I mean, I'm not there yet. I'm in mm. my 50s. But I can never understand why we don't put more effort mm. into looking after yeah. where we're all heading, hopefully, yeah. into our old age. And we just kind of dismiss it. And yet everyone's going to get there. And what are you going to do when you get yeah. there if you haven't put the thought in? Yeah, there's, so, a, huge, there's a huge amount of dis disquiet about the fact, you know, you've paid your stamp for your whole life and yeah. suddenly they're, they're, they're nudging the age. I don't think I'll ever get a pension. I'll be, I'll be 90 before yeah, I get told, one. I'll they be, told me I'll that years ago and I opted out because I was told that. And now as I kind of, you know, it, as get to late 50s, it seems it is still and there. And it is important, especially as we have an ageing population and mm. it's only people are living longer. And I feel like this is the kind of stuff that should be spoken about to young people mm. from when they young Absolutely. to start thinking Absolutely. one day you will be old, you won't always be this fit and how are you going to look after yourself financially beyond the government? And some of the things in the Later Life mani Manifesto, protect, protecting the pensions trip lock is one. Tackling the housing crisis by building more re retirement properties, making it easier for pensioners to move out of family homes, which could then be put on the market for younger people. Increase investment, which we touched on before, in local bus and rail service to ensure they're suitable for the elderly. Um, end bank branch closures that help older people. They haven't got it here, but keep cash. Don't put everything Absolutely. on an app. Make it a choice. Okay. But not everybody wants to be able to use that. I think making things accessible for okay, all Okay, Suze, we have to things. leave it there. We have to leave it there. Superb stuff, Steph. But I was right Suze. on that, wasn't I? I was no, right on that. You were right on that one, but not in <laughs> anyway, It's approach top of the hour. We have much, much more to come. But first, let's take a look at the weather.